first, let's start this off by showing you something that I totally forgot to, to emphasize in the last video. You can see at the upper right corner of the screen the Moss Rock, which is used to evolve um, Eevee into Leafeon, just in case you know you're a fan of Leafeon or something. Personally, I don't really like it very much, but if you want a, a Leafeon, just come here, level up an Eevee, and there you go, you're going to have a brand new Leafeon. Also, something that uh, I didn't have the time to talk about last time, but you probably noticed it anyway, is that uh, in uh, shaking grass patches in the uh, Pinwheel Forest, as well as a few other areas, you can find uh, the, uh, the Elemental Monkeys, which is it's the only way to obtain those monkeys outside of the free one you got at the Dream Yard. So if you're looking for the other two, well, this is the place for you, Pinwheel Forest, as well as, as I said, a, cu a couple of areas that elude me. You can always check Cerebi to see exactly where these are. And uh, they're not exactly rare either. They, ha they each have a 10% chance of appearing in a Shaking Grass patch for a 30% chance total. And oh my god! Look what I found here! One, two, three! Yeah! since the early 80s. Maybe, um, I don't know. I don't have anything witty to say, unfortunately. So, yeah, uh, back to what I was talking about. The the elemental monkeys can be found in Pinwheel Forest in Shaking Grass. Uh, it's sort of aggravating meeting them while you're grinding a Pokemon, actually, because they're not worth that much experience comparing to Audinos. And uh, they actually pop up pretty often, almost, uh... Once every, uh, once every three times, actually. So, yeah, if you if you want a full Pokedex, you're gonna want to come here and find those uh, other two elemental monkeys. It also makes it a little less painful, you know, the fact that I'm using my own Panpour as an HM slave. Speaking of which, I said its name right as it popped up on the screen, and I wasn't exactly paying attention. But, uh, yeah, I guess that's all I have to say about Pinwheel Forest, so, as I've said before, I have a backlog of things to say uh, that I promised I would talk about from earlier in the game, but I couldn't do it because the pace of the game so far has been pretty fast, so how about we start at the beginning with uh, the Elephant Turd Trio? But before that, allow me to get sidetracked once again by pointing out that uh, several trainers give you rewards for defeating them, such as the berry I just got. Uh, I think all the Pokemon Rangers in the game give you something for defeating them. But moving on, the Generation 5 starters, as you may have noticed, they give a lot less experience than uh, starters usually do. Uh, if, you, if you ever noticed, uh, when you fight your rival in the very first fight of the game, um, you often gain, well, not often, but almost always gain about a level and a half. However, uh, in this game, as you probably noticed, when I took down uh, Bianca Zoshawat, I barely, uh, I barely missed level 6. The reason for that is because, well, you're fighting Bianca and Sharon back to back at the beginning of the game, and in order to ensure an equal fight between uh, your starter and Sharon's, both have to be level 5, but you already fought Bianca, so Bianca has to not give you enough experience for you to get to level 6, hence why the game was programmed 
to uh, put you only a one experience point short of level 6 after defeating Bianca's Pokemon. And uh, this is why uh, the Generation 5 starters are, according to uh, Bulba Garden, uh, the Pokemon that will give the least experience of them all uh, when you beat them. So, just um, a bit of knowledge. Speaking of experience, the experience formula was vastly changed in this game in order to um, make grinding a bit easier as well as prevent being overleveled. Um, I'm not going to go over the formula itself, however, I'm going to point out that um, if you have a level advantage that le that's least, that that's less, sorry, can't speak, than 40% of your opponent's level, then you're going to gain more experience. Uh, than you used to in generations 1 through 4, and the lower your, your level is, the more experience you're going to uh, gain, of course. But uh, if uh, your level advantage is over 40% of uh, the opponent's level, then you're going to gain less experience. So um, this is why it's a lot harder to be overleveled in this game. How, uh, w as I said before, you should aim for a level advantage that's about uh, 40% of uh, your opponent's level, because that uh, that's when uh, the experience intake is going to be still pretty decent, but you're go you're still going to be uh, defeating your foes pretty easily. That's that's all theory. Uh, you should pick whatever you feel you feel is right for you in terms of level advantage, as it's always been. But it's just one more consideration to keep in mind. And uh, while I'm on the subject of the Generation 5 starters, um, well, at least I was a few minutes ago, there's something that I would like to, m to mention about uh, Oshawa's official art. Remember when the Generation 5 starters were first revealed? Well, the official art was all we really had going on to know what they looked like. And unfortunately, Oshawa's official art did a pretty poor job of, you know, showcasing... Uh, Asha Watson. Well, I wouldn't say it's the cutest Pokemon ever, but it definitely looks better than uh, that, you know, that frowny face that it has on the official art. And when that was first revealed, uh, people didn't like it very much. Asha Watt was widely considered to be one ugly son of a bitch, especially considered that uh, its predecessor was Piplup, which was one badass mofo, at least for a baby penguin. Oh, shit! Are you serious, boys and point? Well, that breaks it. That's my cue to head back to the nurse at the entrance of the forest. I'm going to head there off camera, and I'll see you back here once I've healed. Okay, sorry about that. Sorry for the interruption, but I'm back. And uh, if you're new to, to my LPs and you're wondering just why didn't I use a potion, well, this is how I play. I don't really like using up... Uh, did I say potion? Antidote! Why didn't he use an antidote? Well, it's because I just don't like using up items unless it's uh, really a matter of life or death, which it really wasn't. I would much rather conserve the item and go get my free healing back at the entrance of the forest rather than consume an antidote. But yeah, I was talking about Oshawott's uh, official art before and how everyone was really harsh on it because uh, the official art was sort of a failure, actually, and oh! TM86 Grass Knot! This is a pretty decent move competitively, it depends on the tier, but in Overused you face a lot of heavy Pokémon, so this is this definitely comes in handy against them. But uh, in-game it's sort of meh, because a lot of the Pokémon you'll face are going to be lighter ones, so I wouldn't really recommend using Grass Knot, uh, unless you are in very specific situations. And uh, this Plasma Grunt, if I remember correctly, he's the, he's the one that's got the Dragon Skull, so... It's on, I guess! Prepare to get demolished! Um, yeah, what I was saying was that uh, people were really harsh on Oshawott because the, the official art was, quite frankly, crap. And uh, as and I, I just wanted to tell you, I was the first to uh, bash the hell out of Oshawott. Uh, because it looked so ugly when the official art first came out. I just wanted to tell you, I've seen Oshawott in action since then, and it's definitely a lot cuter than uh, the official art implies. It's not... Uh, of course, I still prefer Piplup uh, by a fairly large margin, but it's not that much of a disaster in my mind anymore. 
Yes, I'm making amends for something I said before that was wrong. Imagine that. Mark that date on your calendars because it's unlikely to happen in the next 15 years. Oh, and by the way, thanks for the sand dial, Mr. Grunt. Some, e some easy experience for my petty lil. I'm gladly going to take it. Um, because of its lack of type coverage, Petty Lil and later Lilligant really isn't the best choice uh, to put in the lead unless you're going into an area that it, that has a lot of Pokémon that uh, it's strong against, which is definitely not the case here. And I got the Dragon Skull back! I'm honestly not sure why he doesn't try to make a run for it, especially since we've seen Plasma Grunts earlier, even after being defeated, still continuing uh, what they were doing when they beat up that Muna. Anyway, meet Gorm, one of the seven sages of Team Plasma. We've uh, already met Getsis, which is the, the de facto leader of the seven sages. But uh, we uh, this is the first of... Um, what we could call the other six. Oh, wait a minute! According to the results of our research, this is not the legendary Pokémon for which Team Plasma is looking. You don't say! Team Plasma is looking for... Yeah, I, I think I can afford to spoil it at this point. They're looking for Reshiram! Not freaking Dragonite! What kind of idiotic villainous team would mistake a Dragonite for... For a Reshiram! Holy shit! And I thought these guys were morons before. Seems even the higher-ups are completely um, out of their mind in terms of idiocy. Stealing a Dragonite Skull because it... I don't know, it's the same type as Reshiram before doing the proper research?! Good lord! I didn't remember at all that there was an explanation for this, but uh, this is so stupid I wish I'd never known at all. Uh, anyway, I was talking about the seven sages of Team Plasma. In this game, Getsis is the only one that you end up fighting, which led to a common complaint about this game being that you never fight the other six. Black and White 2 fixed this somewhat. You get to fight two of the sages that aren't Getsis, to my knowledge. The other four cannot be fought. I don't even know if they appear. They probably do, though. But anyway, Gorm is dragging on and on. He's saying what we've already been told several times about Team Plasma's goal of liberating the Monaders. And, um... Yeah, that's about all there is to it. Finally, he's done uh, blabbering on. They're a speedy bunch. Um, I wouldn't say that. Did you just take a look at how long he spent staying there, saying things that we already knew? But, uh, yeah, Berg suggests that uh, we don't go... Uh, we, that we don't per, uh, take further action against Team Plasma for the time being, which of course is a decision that they is going to come back to bite us in the ass later on. So, um, yeah, we're going to be challenging uh, Berg in rather short order. We gotta make it to Castalia City first. So, yeah, we gotta give her the Dragon Skull back. Still can't believe they thought it was related to Reshiram in any way, shape, or form. Now, that's not quite all we have to do in Pinwheel Forest. There are still a few trainers that remain unaccounted for. Oh, we're going to get a gift, and it is a Moonstone, which is used for evolving Muna. I think Muna is the only one in the Unova decks that evolves using a Moonstone, but we can also use it on other uh, Pokémon like Nidorino, Nidorina, Skitty, stuff like that, should we ever come across them. So as I said, there are a few trainers that are on the main road of uh, Pinwheel Forest, the one that we didn't go to just yet, and we found another Miracle Seed, thanks. So I'm going to take care of these guys next time, so I'll see you then.